And good day, my listeners. We're at Psalms chapter 119, verse 60, if I'm not mistaken. And we have a slight rainstorm over my head, but oh well. Anyways, I made haste and delayed not to keep your commandments. Notes. Now, once again, this could only be said of the Messiah. Verse 61. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten your law. Notes. The perfect keeping of the perfect law did not keep away the bands of the wicked, nor the uh, their insidious activity, but it did give a comfort that nothing else could give. I mean, they persecuted him almost right out the chute. Matter of fact, his birth actually caused quite a bit of death in the regions around him because of that lovely little person by the name of King Herod. Okay, uh, He was persecuted, and he problems chased him all his days. He still did not forsake the word of God. Verse 62, At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto you because of your righteous judgments. Notes. Now, hmm. the idea of this psalm and the passage uh, and this passage is that neither suffering nor ease could weaken the affection of the heart for the scriptures. Uh, in other words, he loved the word of God no matter how he was feeling. Verse 63, I am a companion for all them who fear you and of them who keep your precepts. Notes. Kind of ironic here, but the companions of the Messiah were not the religious leaders of his day. They persecuted him all the time, regularly. Verse 64. The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. Notes. Now, as the ad adversity of verse 61 failed to turn the Messiah away from the word of God, so neither did the prosperity of verse 64 weaken his fidelity to it. He constantly pursued the word of God. Well, what a shock. He was God. Verse 65. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according unto your word. Notes. Fidelity to His Word is the only thing that truly ensures blessings from God. He honors nothing else. Verse 66. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed your commandments. Notes. According to the very Word of God, immediately upon conversion, spiritual intelligence begins to increase find that kind of interesting there. Verse 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept your word. Notes. Now as a true priest and a true advocate, Christ presents himself as the guilty one and at the same time, credits, he gives us credit with the perfection of the obedience which only he personally rendered to the word of God. In other words, he took all of our sin and made it look as if we had never done anything. Quite unusual right there, don't you think? For God to love us so much that he, he makes our sin as if it never even happened. As far as the east is from the west. Thank you, Lord. Verse 68. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. Notes. Well, the... the the statutes of God, if they are followed properly by everyone, they would fill the earth with goodness. As simply as I can say it. R right off the top of my head, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 25, God gives you conditions. You do my work, you're blessed. You follow my word, you're blessed. But in the day that you forsake me, you are cursed. As simple as that. You've got light, You've got darkness. You've got life. You've got death. Choose him. Uh, it's a no-brainer. Verse 69. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Notes. 
The hatred of the proud against the lover of the word of God makes the Bible more precious to the meek people of this world. It's like saying, you know, the very fact that you're ticking people off with the word of God is kind of a sign that you're doing the right thing. You know, you finally got that devil stirred up and now he's actually trying to stand against you. Well, good. That means you've dealt him a couple of cuts. Verse 70. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. Notes. Now, a heart that is fat as grease is insensible and stupid, while such a heart is incompetent to judge the commandments of God. Verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. Notes. Now, chastening and discipline, they make the Bible more precious and the life more fruitful. They are helpful Bible teachers. Verse 72. The law of your mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silvers. Notes. Quite simply put, the possession of the scriptures is greater wealth than all the treasure the world contains. Verse 73. Yeah, we got some rain coming down real good right now. Anyways... Your hands have made me f uh, your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Notes Now the true speaker of this is actually Christ, and the words apply to him in perfection as they apply to others of necessity only in part. Okay. Verse seventy four. They who fear you will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in your word. Notes. Well, Israel is going to be very glad in that coming day when they see Christ. Verse 75. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right, and that you in faithfulness have afflicted me. Notes. In the absolute most strict of interpretation, this passage applies to Christ in his incarnation. Verse 76, Let, I pray you, your merciful kindness be for my comfort according to your word unto your servant. Notes. If one will notice, the Messiah here does not pray for the removal of these afflictions, but instead for the enjoyment of compensating comforts, but only such comforts as accorded with God's word. He didn't just pray and pray and pray for you know the problems to just simply cease, which there's really no problem with that. He actually you know is asking you know uh, let people learn from it. Verse seventy seven. Let your tender mercies come unto me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Notes. Now, delight in the Hebrew text stands in the plural number, and therefore, it's actually talking about supreme delight. Verse 78. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause, but I will meditate in your precepts. Notes. Now this actually pertains to the scribes and Pharisees who dealt very perversely with him. He, he retreated to the word of the Lord. As a matter of fact, he chewed them out regularly with it. Verse 79. Let those who fear you turn unto me and those who have known your testimonies. Notes. The people who truly fear God they turned to the Messiah. Those who did not fear God turned to the proud. Well, doesn't that sound like a Pharisee or a Sadducee to me? How about you? Now, there were a couple of Pharisees and a couple of Sadducees that are documented as turning around and doing the right thing. But such is very rare, unfortunately. The religious heart is one of the hardest hearts of all. Verse 80. Let my heart be sound in your statutes, that I be not ashamed. 
notes. Well, soundness in the Word of God is the criteria. Okay? Verse 81. My soul faints for your salvation, but I hope thou in your word. Notes. No man who longs for and faints for salvation from God will go unheard. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. Verse 82. My eyes fail for your word, saying, When will you comfort me? Notes. Now, the first part of this scripture could actually be translated slightly different. I'll go ahead and read it for you. I will not stop looking for the fulfillment of your word, and in fact will look, if necessary, until I go blind. <laughs> I mean, that's some pretty strong dedication right there. Verse 83, For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, Yet do I not forget your statutes. Notes. Now this pertains to Israel's rejection of Christ and the constant persecution heaped upon him by the Pharisees. His hope was in the word of God. Verse 84. Now many are the days of your servant. When will you execute judgment on them who persecute me? Notes. Now Christ, as being Lord, could at any moment have destroyed his persecutors, but as man, he would not take vengeance unto his own hands, for vengeance belongs unto God solely. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Verse 85. The proud have dug pits for me, which are not after your law. Notes. Now, obviously, the proud are the self-righteous nitwits known as Pharisees. Matthew chapter 15 records some of the pits that the proud and the ignorant dug for him. Verse 86. All your commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help thou me. Notes. The sense of the first part of this passage is that even though God did not deem it desirable to lift the persecution, still the word of God would ultimately see him through. And it certainly did. Verse 87. They had almost consumed me upon the earth, but I forsook not your precepts. Notes. Now, the word almost means quickly in this sense. And the sense of this verse is, they wished to quickly make an end of him. They wanted him out of their hair because he was doing some damage to their pocketbooks. That's one of the things that religious people love. They love to have the highest seats of honor. They love to have the places of recognition. They like to, you know, go out and stand in the synagogues and on the street corners and give long prayers and all this. They love honor and they love all these other things. But whenever he started talking sense around the people, the people stopped paying attention to him. So he ultimately ended up damaging their pocketbooks, whether he really intended to do that to them or not. Uh, whatever, I mean. But he was hurting their pocketbooks. And they didn't like it, and they wanted him out of their hair permanently. Oh, how horrible that desire is. Verse 88. Quicken me after your loving kindness, so shall I keep the testimony of your mouth. Notes. Now, again, the word quicken means to make alive. Verse 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Notes. This right here says that basically God's word is eternal. Okay? With that being said, we'll have to pick up in Psalms 119, verse 90. Thank you, and God bless. Bye-bye.